Our guest today is the Chancellor of the City Colleges of Chicago. Prior to her appointment, she, ter she served as a top executive at Commonwealth Edison. Our guest today will oversee a $476 million a year budget in the city college system with 5,700 employees and 115,000 students. She is a graduate of Olive Harvey College. She's a master's from North Park University. She attended ITT and holds an MBA from Northwestern's Kellogg School of Management. Our guest today is a Chicago native who grew up on the west side and graduated from Orr High School. Ladies and gentlemen, the Chancellor of the City College System of Chicago, Cheryl Hyman. Cheryl? I see you. <laughs> Thank you, Jay. Thank you, Dr. Green, Chairman Cabrera, the other City Colleges of Chicago board members, my City Colleges family, and my sincere thanks to all of you for coming out to learn more about the City Colleges of Chicago. Much of what you hear today may be difficult and surprising, as it was for me when Mayor Daley appointed me chancellor some months ago. I would also like to stress that the issues that you'll hear about are not unique to City Colleges of Chicago. Many community colleges across the nation are struggling with the same issues we are. But I hope that when we're done, you will recognize that we have a plan to address these challenges and be inspired to be a part of the reinvention of City Colleges of Chicago. I want you to know that City Colleges of Chicago works, and it has worked for 99 years, and I'm a prime example of that. Olive Harvey, one of the seven city colleges, is where I got back on track. I dropped out of high school, but after realizing the future I wanted required a quality education, I returned to school and graduated from Orr High School on the west side. I had my sights set on college, specifically IIT, but I knew I wasn't financially ready, so an advisor recommended that I attended City Colleges first. And with that, it's very important to recognize the people who helped you along the way. I am so proud that the math teacher at Olive Harvey College that helped me prepare and worked with me both day and night to ensure that I was ready for IIT is still teaching at Olive Harvey and is sitting in the audience and I'd like to recognize him, Dr. Keith George. I'd also like to recognize some City College's students who have worked with me um, in the short months that I've been here and trying to ensure that I understood their needs, their desires, and what they wanted to achieve. And I'd like those City Colleges of Chicago students to stand now. Thank you. I did attend City Colleges, graduating with my associate's degree within three years, and then continuing as planned on to IIT, where I graduated with my degree in computer science, in addition to obtaining the two additional master's degrees from North Park University and Kellogg at Northwestern. I was very fortunate to be hired by ComEd and enjoyed a very successful 14-year career until Mayor Daley gave me the opportunity to become chancellor. I accepted this challenge to ensure that the city colleges works, not just for some, like it does today, but for every student. While we are, for many students, the most convenient and cost-effective college option, I believe we must also deliver an education of economic value. Value to the student who can see a clear path to employment or further education. To the taxpayers 
who can be confident of a sound return on the investment in our institution. And to the communities and city we serve who need a highly educated workforce more than ever. But the truth is that community colleges across the nation and city colleges are in a silent crisis. When the national conversation turns to economic recovery and the role education plays in it, people mostly refer to our K through 12 systems, which of course has an, an enormous role to play. However, the battle for the quality of today's and tomorrow's future workforce is taking place right now at community colleges nationwide, including city colleges. And the battle is not something many are aware of. In fact, it has never been more important for our nation and our city to focus on matching our citizens' skills and educational attainment to the future demands of business and society. Nowhere is the need for this match more pronounced than at the post-secondary level, and especially in community colleges, where some still debate if they should prepare students for four-year colleges or serve as a training ground for the workforce. We can't afford to continue to have that debate. We must do both. By 2018, 64% of jobs in Illinois, or 4.4 million, will require some form of post-secondary education. 1.5 million of these jobs will require an associate's degree. More specifically, by 2020, Chicago will need approximately 75,000 more healthcare practitioners than we currently have, and over one third of those positions will be for holders of associate's degrees. Chicago will need almost 18,000 newly educated registered nurses. In computer science, we will need 10,000 new workers with associate's degrees. In transportation, we will need 4,000 new truck drivers to fill the openings that will occur between now and 2020. The likelihood that city colleges will meet our share of these needs and many others looks very unlikely if we continue down the same path we are headed. And later on in this presentation, I will show you the facts about why. What is clear is that the cost of not acting is high. The skill to job mismatch, if not addressed, will mean that tens of thousands more residents could miss what is increasingly their only chance of reaching the middle class. If that happens, the economic base of our region could be undermined. Fortunately, our mayor is acutely aware of this challenge and our nation's leaders recognize this as well. I recently had the privilege to attend the White House Summit on Community Colleges. I can tell you firsthand that our leaders have also come to recognize the important role that community colleges play in meeting this demand. They also recognize the potential high return on, invest on investment which community colleges can deliver for students, employees, and communities. Community colleges have not been the primary focus of educational reform. Now that we are being relied upon to meet the needs of the 21st century economy, it is clear that many of us are not prepared to meet this need. Lawmakers are pressing for greater accountability and a greater focus on completion at community colleges, an opportunity we at City Colleges of Chicago embrace. But bringing about major change in an institution of our size with our long history is not for the faint at heart. The City Colleges of Chicago will turn 100 next year. We serve more than 120,000 students, nearly 60,000 at the undergraduate level each year. With a population this large, we have the potential to have a greater impact on undergraduate post-secondary education than any other institution in Illinois. We are here to serve our students' diverse needs. Today, 45% of our students are pursuing an associate's degree. Nearly two-thirds of these students are three or less years out of high school and are attending school part-time. 6% of students are working towards a professional credential, 
32% are in adult education programs earning a GED, English as a second language or basic literacy. 17% are seeking continuing education for personal enrichment. You can see the diversity of population sizes and the programs we offer at the different colleges on the slide behind me. We have 5,800 faculty and staff on seven college campuses and seven satellite sites. We also oversee two restaurants, a radio station, a television station, daycare centers, and more. Our students come to us with real challenges. They are often balancing work and family and frequently economic challenges. But regardless of circumstances, we know that our students can succeed and I'm living proof of that. We have many programs at city colleges that do succeed for our students. For example, Malcolm X College's Nephrology Renal Technology Program has a 98% job placement rate. It has had a 100% pass rate on a certification exam for the past four years. This example and others are a testament to the hard work of our faculty, staff, and students. However, examples of success here and there are not good enough. If we are going to meet the workforce needs of the 21st century, we need to align our programs and focus on moving students along a path to completion and employment. Unfortunately, today we are falling short of that goal. Now here are the facts. City College's enrollment has declined by approximately 30% from 1998 to 2008, while national enrollment grew by 17% over nearly the same period, and jobs requiring post-secondary education are growing steadily. We know the payoff for a degree is there. There is an annual earnings differential of 7,500 for those with an associate's degree compared to those with a high school degree. More importantly, in this economy, the unemployment rate is nearly halved for the associate's degree earner versus those with just a high school diploma. We know that more is possible. We can see here that best-in-class institutions do six times better than city colleges and graduation rates. Who are these institutions that we compared ourselves to? I'm glad you asked. <laughs> we compared ourselves to community colleges around the country with similar size, similar degree offerings, and similar racial and ethnic demographics. We included many schools that are urban, and whose students have high financial aid needs exactly like us, as well as those that are suburban and may have fewer financial aid needs. Our conclusion, I'm glad you asked. While our students may have greater challenges, we should aspire <coughs> to the absolute best for them, regardless of external circumstances. And if we need more resources to get there, then we'll fight for them. But right now at City Colleges, we struggle. On average, only 7% of students who are first time, full time, that come for a credential, earn it within three years like I did. And if you look at all students, including part time, we only get a 1% increase and we are at 8%. Now some will argue that it's unfair to only look at graduation rates at community colleges and we should consider those that come to us and tra to transfer and transfer to a four-year institution prior to community college's graduation. We agree. And what we found is that our 29% transfer rate, as reported federally, contains a lot of indicators, such as students who transfer to other two-year institutions, even within city colleges, and students who drop out after transferring but before they complete their degree. When you eliminate these indicators, we found that just 16% of students actually transfer to a four-year institution, and only 4 to 5% actually earn their bachelor's degree. Of Illinois' 49 two-year institutions, City College's seven campuses all rank in the bottom 10 on graduation rates. We lose 54% of credential-seeking students in their first 15 credits, or worth roughly six months. Why is this so? 
Among the factors we think contribute to our graduation and completion challenges are a sky-high student-to-advisor ratio, insufficient wraparound services, including the availability of childcare, and an unclear value proposition to students. We have an average ratio of one advisor to every 920 students, which goes as high as one to 1,300. Our faculty, staff, and students echo and feel this concern as well. Another reason why we are having trouble, regardless of where our students come from, more than 90% of them need remediation. Students who need significant remediation have one in 10 chance of reaching a successful outcome. Now I've told you about the graduation rate and transfer rate. Now what about a specific tie to jobs? We have begun to analyze the needs of businesses in, in the Chicago area and have found a troubling trend. Many of our programs do not tie to employee demand close enough a disservice to our students and to the business community. If you look at the areas where, where well-paying jobs are really growing, you see some usual suspects. Information technology is one, business is another. Let's take business. We see that both job growth on the y-axis and earnings potential on the, on the y-axis, job growth on the x-axis, are both high. And yet we had only 508 students starting in the program in 2007. Now if all 508 students graduated, city colleges would be contributing to the economy along with other business schools. But the chance of that is slim and information technology is the same story. We need to understand why more students aren't choosing these programs, provide the resources to expand them, and ensure that more students complete them. And as I will describe later, we will be doing this kind of analysis for every program at City Colleges to ensure we are doing everything we can to provide a clear pathway for every student to succeed. Finally, of the students who come to us for basic education, GED, or English as a second language, those students we want to get on the path to college credit courses. But only 35% meet their stated goals, including only 14% of students who state that they want to obtain a GED actually do so. We must do better for our city, for local businesses who rely on us to provide the base of the workforce, and most importantly, for our students who spend money and time with us hoping to reach their goals. It's not enough to welcome students through our doors, they must thrive here. We are committed to creating an institution that combines both student access with success. I define success very simply. We know we'll have succeeded when we accomplish the following four goals. Number one, increase the number of students earning college credentials of economic value. Number two, increase the rate of transfer to bachelor's degree programs following City College's graduation. Number three, drastically improve outcomes for students requiring remediation. And number four, increase the number and share of adult education, GED, and ESL students who advance to and succeed in college level courses. Reinvention is a long and sustained process. As you can see in our two year timeline, starting with the diagnostic that we've shown you here, to focusing on solution generation, piloting programs, and implementing successful programs over time. Our approach will be fact-based, transparent, and relentlessly focused on implementing the programs that will have the greatest outcomes for our students. This is a topic I will have the privilege of speaking more about sooner in another venue. But let me just say now that transparency and a focus on outcomes are the bedrock of this process. Reinvention is also a collaborative process in which teams led by administrators and made up of faculty, staff, and students representing every college will explore eight key areas for improvements, 
will look for solutions both at city colleges and best practice institutions nationwide and will help us implement these solutions across the district. These task forces will do the following. Review our program offerings to increase the economic and educational value of student earned credentials by better aligning our programs with employer needs. Dramatically improve student support, including advising, tutoring, job placement, and transfer support. Address remediation by partnering with Chicago Public Schools and others to identify an approach to quickly move all students into credit programs. Target and support improvements in faculty and staff development programs, including performance goals and evaluation measurements. Bring best practice operational efficiency to the city colleges to improve the return on investment of non-instructional costs and build an investment strategy that better supports student success. Drive significant improvement in city colleges instructional and student support technology and data integrity. Improve adult continuing education programs so that all students complete their program and successfully transfer to college credit courses. And finally, recommend strategic capital investments to modernize our facilities and ensure we have the resources to prepare students for 21st century careers. The task force work will be guided by external advisory councils made up of leaders from academia, business, civic groups and foundations, capital planning experts and the community. I would like to thank the esteemed co-chairs of the external advisory councils, which include the individuals you see listed on the slide behind me. In addition to learning from and taking feedback from our advisory council members, the task forces will research best practices at city colleges and at institutions with national reputations to improve outcomes for our students. It is institutions like these that give me hope. They are doing better on many of the same measures of success that we strive for. Valencia Community College, for example, leads the nation in the number of associate's degrees awarded and the number of associate's degrees awarded to minorities. They were cited in a recent McKinsey and Company study of the most highly productive higher educational institution in the country. Through reinvention, that's the vision we have for our students and our institution. Again, reinvention is a two-year process, and some solutions will likely take longer to implement. But we are not waiting to make change. We have some exciting initial, initial projects already underway now. Just to name a few, for the first time, we are reaching out to 15,000 at-risk students to help them develop plans to pass their courses. We have begun a pilot project with the Chicago Public Schools to develop early intervention programs to make sure students are ready to transition to college. And we have negotiated agreements with UIC <coughs> to guarantee 30 seats and a full scholarship program for another 75 students with IIT, among others. I'd like to thank those who have already made generous financial contributions to support reinvention, including the Gates Foundation, the Ciro Funds at the Chicago Community Trust, and the Joyce Foundation. I also deeply appreciate the extensive pro bono support from the Civic Consulting Alliance and other strategic consultants. Now, here's what we need from you to help us ensure student success and make the city colleges an economic engine of our great city. First and foremost, hire our students. Join me in investing in those who are working hard to advance students along the path to success. Second, partner with us to help us tailor programs to your workforce needs. If our students are not graduating with the skills you need, make sure we know what training is needed to help your business become successful. Third, Weigh in with your ideas and monitor the progress of the reinvention effort online at www.reinventingccc.org, where we will be as transparent as possible about how we are moving towards our vision. Reinvention is our pledge 
their students will leave our institution college ready, career ready, and prepared to pursue their life's goals. Reinvention will put us back on track to build the skilled workforce our economy demands and our city and nation needs. Reinvention is our effort to do our part to address the silent crisis. In short, reinvention is about building the foundation for student success. I hope you'll join me to help our students realize their full potential. Thank you. the questions come up for our speaker, Primo Veritas, Father, I always say it. Uh, where's Ed Mazur? Uh, when did you start teaching at the City College, Mr. Mazur? Uh, 1968. Um, Professor Green, when did you start? 1969. And I can honestly say a lot of these questions were being asked by Oscar Shabbat and Sal Rotella. All right. <laughs> Only City College long timers. I see the 1600 over there. Uh, I don't see the ghost of Norm Swenson, though. All right, here we go. <laughs> Joy Saxon, City Club of Chicago, Board of Governors. A teacher at Oakton tells, Oakton is not the City, uh, city College, is uh, Well, I'll read the question. A teacher at Oakton tells me that he has a full class until students collect on their grant money. <laughs> then they drop out. Does that happen at the City College? Oh, a tough question to start off with. No, I, I understand the question very well, and uh, whoever asked it, thank you for the, uh, for the question. Who, thank you very much um, for asking uh, that question. It is a real issue, and I'll uh, try to explain um, the question and what it means. So you saw on one of the charts we have a 54% drop-off rate in the first six months. Um, it has been brought to my attention by our own faculty, by our own staff, and even some of our students that many of those students will come to us, uh, enroll for a full-time uh, classes, but then when their classes are paid for and they get their Pell um, grant reimbursement, they leave. Now, that is a real issue for us. And some will say, well, you know, you have a lot of students um, that are just taking the financial aid and leaving. I would ask the question, would they leave if they saw a better value proposition? It's obviously that these students, too, want to try to find a way to try to care for themselves. It's just unfortunate that this is the solution that they found to do that. So it is a real issue in all community colleges. This is another one of those issues that community colleges across the nation is trying to deal with. But I believe through the collaborative efforts of what we're trying to do, when we strengthen our programs and students can come to us and see a real future, I think we can clean some of that up. Thank you. Two more, now we're beginning to get a roll. From Fernando Grillo, a member of the City Club. What's being done to stave off the recruitment efforts of private colleges and private business and vocational colleges? Are they succeeding? And how do the stats compare? Uh, recruitment efforts, you mean stealing students? Uh, Roosevelt would never do that. No, no way. So, um, thanks for the question. So there's a lot of debate between uh, the uh, private institutions to public institutions. Let me just tell you where I personally stand. Being a former business person, I don't believe anybody can steal your customer. Customers go where they see value. They go where they think they have a better chance. I think it is my job, I think it is the job of all employees of City Colleges of Chicago to turn this institution into what it already has been doing for 99 years, a real institution of educational value. Once we do that, I am quite sure that many of our students, like now, who are finding value in us, we will be able to retain a lot more. Um, and so all I can focus on is what am I doing to ensure that this is a quality institution, not what my competition is doing. Not to mention, I think the same problems exist in both arenas. There's been a lot of talk about students who are graduating from private institutions with high debt and can't find a job. 
but there's a lot of students graduating from me, public institutions that are funded by taxpayer dollars who can't find jobs and not getting the credentials of value they deserve. So the value proposition to the student is the same. And so I think, um, not to mention, there are some things that you can learn from your competitors. There are some things that the private institutions do very well. I plan on looking at them too. Thank you. Okay. Uh, we have a question from City Club member Carlos Ponce, uh, from board member of the CHA. By the way, excellent uh, handwriting. Uh, in the, actually, it's print, helps the eyes. In the past, city college reforms have been blocked by conflict between the chancellor and the city college president. How will that, how will this be addressed? In a very kind manner. Um, no, I, I so we, we've changed is hard, right? No matter where you're at, whether you're at ComEd, whether you're at city colleges, the emotions around change is the same. How does this affect me? What are you gonna do? How does this you know, hurt me? Not to mention, there's a lot of people who have worked very hard over decades in this system, and they've seen the Cheryl Hymans come in and out of their classroom. So to reveal data like this, one may, actually assume, are you saying I've did a bad job? No, the economy has changed, times has changed, the world's circumstances <laughs> has changed. So change is hard, but we've been taking this platform um, around to the schools, around to our extension sites, talking to many faculty, staff, and students. The one thing that they're excited about is that they're going to be a part of the change. So the chancellor is not just sitting in her office saying, you know, we're going to do this, not all the time. They are a part of that change. And actually, I have all seven presidents here, if you all could stand. Oh, let's do please. That. And they are very excited, aren't you, President? <laughs> see? Well, I see something hasn't changed. You're all circled together, right? <laughs> Oscar Shab would be proud of you on that one. Okay, the last question comes from that old timer, Mr. Mazur, and we have to make it a tough one. Uh, one counselor for 920 students. How did the city colleges of Chicago let this develop, and what will you do to remedy, remedy this? So we know some of the issues that uh, happened. It wasn't anybody who let anything happen. Uh, things happen, things change. There's a lot of movement in education and priorities shift back and forth. 10 years from now, somebody else will be standing here talking about something else and some different priorities. There was a time where we had far more advisors and it was a large grant that was funding that. But then that grant was cut and other resources had to be reshifted and other things happened. So I don't think it's anything that anybody let happen. I just think what it is is a result of a lot of change that happened over time. But what we're going to do about it is to continue to enlist people to partner with us, continue to provide, um, find resources in order to get that uh, team of advisors back. And we really need to consider whether we need a combination of high tech and high touch. I have 120,000 students. I couldn't possibly afford to have enough human capital to advise all those students. But times have changed and there's a lot of good technologies out there and not everybody needs high touch. So you need to figure out again what the student needs and then figure out how to provide the resources for them. Frank has a question. Well, go right ahead, sir. My boss. Oh, boss. Former boss, Great. step up to the microphone. Great. You shared a statistic that I never, uh, that I hadn't seen. Mm -hmm. uh, with all of these kids that need. Right. To Repeat the question. Um, he asked about the remediation. What What do we do about it? And um, it's such a large population. So remediation is probably the hottest topic in education right now. 
because K through 12 across the nation is going through a lot of reform. Um, their na national leaders do recognize that it is a huge issue. 90% of the students that come to us, regardless where they come from, need some form of remediation. We get students from private high schools too, and they also need remediation. So this is a huge issue. There are several things that's happening on the national level, and then some things that we're trying to do here locally. On the national level, one of the things that I'm advocating um, on the times I do go to Washington is a curriculum alignment. One of the things that I've found is you have students who can just ace the K through 12 curriculum and know it are very smart students, but then that curriculum may not be the same curriculum that's in college. So you're going to always have a gap that you'll need um, to close, and there are people at the national level working on that. But then there's a huge population of students who have already graduated but still want to come back and need to come back uh, to school and what we've did and what we're doing is partnering with CPS, partnering with others um, to look at how we can assess a student's needs and close the gaps quicker as opposed to the traditional, some of the more traditional models, whereas if you come to me, you take the math exam, you know, you fail the math exam, now you have to repeat 15 math courses. What about if you only need trigonometry? and we close that gap, work with our faculty, work with staff to close that gap and try to get them into credit level courses quicker. So we're talking to a lot of people, including our own internal faculty who deal with this every day and have been giving us good solutions just to look at how we, one, work with CPS and other private institutions to stop the bleeding, and then what medicine we prescribe going forward to uh, deal with this issue. Any other CEO doesn't want to follow the rules and raise their hand? Or, uh, that's called the Clark. Uh, that's called the, the the Clark Amendment. How about a big round of applause for our speaker?